It is so good to see all of you in this place. What a joy and a privilege it is to share in the goodness and the love of the Lord together. It is great to see that you also, like myself, by the grace of God, are remnants. Uh, the Lord has preserved you and kept you for himself. In case we have visitors in the house today, my name is Brian Moshigadi. I'm born again. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. It is the honor of my life to serve God here and the Bishop Dr. Jimmy and Pastor Alice Kimani. And I thank God for the privilege to serve God's people here at the Shiloh Worship Center. In Jesus' name, turn to your neighbor, look them straight in the eye, tell them, neighbor, it is good to see you this morning. You look good. Tell your neighbor, you look good. Put some life into it. Tell them, you look good. All right. We go right into the word of God today, and today we are looking at the believer's practice. We're looking at the believer's practice, and today we are looking at to be a witness. The believer's practice and what we are looking at today is to be a witness or witnessing. The believer's practice we are looking at today is witnessing. We are in the book of Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6. And we're going to read a couple of portions of scripture. Actually, we're just going to go ahead with it. We're going to read Acts chapter 6 from verse 6. Um, I'm reading in the New King James. It says, Now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude and of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve the tables. Therefore, verse 3, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. Verse 7, then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were ordained to the faith, and that is the word of the Lord. Now, we are looking at witnessing, to witness in simple terms. To witness or a witness is someone who sees an event and reports what happened. That is the most simple definition I could find. A witness is someone who sees an event and reports what happened. Someone who sees an event and reports what happened. Another definition of witness is a close observer. A close observer. Another one is someone who looks at something. Okay? We're going to work with the first two definitions. Someone who sees an event or sees events and reports what happened and a close observer. All right? So we are looking at witnessing being the believer's practice. As we've shared here before, if you're not a visitor, you know every time we talk about the believer's practice, we're talking about those things that scripture has laid plain to every Christian, everyone that has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, or everyone that is looking to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the life that the believer ought to live. We get these things directly off of scripture. And when we read the word of God, there are things that the Bible calls us to do as believers. Whether you are old in age or old in the faith, whether you are a child or an adult, a young adult or a parent, whether you are a grandparent, so long as you're a believer, there are specific things that the Lord has called that every believer might do. There is a way that believers ought to carry themselves, whether they are in the country or in the outside the country. Whether they are in the church or at home, a believer ought to carry themselves in a certain way. That's why we have the Bible. It is a set of ways or instructions that we ought to add to our lives. In fact, that we are supposed to work into our lives so that we can be able to be more and more like Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We've talked about this man, um, the proselyte from Antioch. It is at Antioch that the Christians were first called 
Christians or that the believers were first, first called Christians. What it simply looked like or meant was that they were Christ-like. They were acting like Christ. You see, Jesus Christ has already ascended. And around that time in Jerusalem, there are people who had been around Jesus, his disciples, people who used to follow him in the crowds. They were around him. So when Jesus has ascended into heaven, he has left them in the earth, he has left them the Holy Spirit. And so these people, as they are going around, they are doing the things that Jesus used to do. They are talking like Jesus and moving like Jesus and moved with compassion like Jesus. They are thinking like Jesus. People look at them and they say these ones are like Christ. So they are called Christians. When we look at you and when you look at me, even without saying anything, you are people are supposed to be able to see this person is acting like like Christ, Buana Sifiwe. Buana Eso Sifiwe. All right, so the believers' practice we're looking at today is witness. These witnesses, who are we talking about? These believers that we're talking about, the early church, are people who had seen the events of Jesus Christ. They had been around him. The Lord in his ministry for three years, and before that, for the 30 years that he lived, he had lived then, these were people who were around him. They had seen how he had carried themselves. When we see our introduction to Jesus Christ at the age of 12 in the temple, not really introduction, not when he was born, the introduction when he started to speak okay when the first words that are recorded of jesus christ in the temple which were really a question why are you looking for me so the first first words that we find right there in scripture from that time age 12 and then there continues to be a seemingly 18 year old silence that we are not able to find or plug in where was jesus that is summarized later in the book of hebrews chapter 4 talking about our high priest who was tested in every way without sin and then all the way into his about three year ministry give or take while he was in the earth is enough to lay out for us how a believer in God, a follower of Christ, is supposed to live because we are trying to be like him. Now, there are people around his day and age who saw how he acted, who heard how he taught. They were observers. They were close followers. To, they had seen the events of his life, and later they are reporting what had happened. Buana Eswa Sefiwe. Buana Eswa Sefiwe. All right, so looking at those people as witnesses to try and see how they became witnesses. Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, in his words, in Acts chapter 1, if you could turn there with me, Acts chapter 1, and the Bible says Jesus is responding to a question that, the, uh, that, the, that um, uh, his followers are asking him, and he says in verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and in all the ends of of the earth. Tell your neighbor, witness. Turn to another one, tell them, witness. Now, Jesus Christ is speaking to them and he's telling them, you shall receive power and you shall become my witnesses. You shall be the people who have seen the events and then now you shall go out and report on what has been happening. Now, this will not just happen because drama kama video. you are being filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, you shall be filled with the Holy Spirit and you shall be witnesses. The natural result of receiving this promised power will be that they would become witnesses. To be a witness is as a natural result of receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. When you have received the Holy Spirit, it goes without saying, you are a witness. You become a witness. It is such, it is almost a natural process. You see, you don't need to convince me about the events that happened in a place where I was. If I saw it happening, I can recount it to you. All the places I have been to in my life, all the events I have witnesses, I have witnessed. Eh? I have seen with my eyes. I don't need somebody to come and start convincing me so that I can start to able try and remember, try and tengeneza your story, try and imagine. I don't need to imagine. I was there. I saw it. I just need to recount. Now, the thing for the disciples and for the followers of Christ that urges them on to be witnesses is the Holy Spirit. He says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. 
Now, it is just that wherever you are, you are able to recount. You are able to tell what you have seen, what you have heard, what has happened around this Lord and Savior that was around there. So the disciples are filled with the Holy Spirit, or he's promising them the Holy Spirit. Of course, later in Acts chapter 2, the Bible talks about when the day of Pentecost had fully come, about 10 days later, when after Jesus has spoken these words and has ascended into heaven, so the Holy Spirit comes upon them. In that very instance, they become witnesses. All over, when Peter makes his first address to the church, which, will not look, which we will not look into right now, when he makes his first address to the people, that day when about 3,000 people are added to the number, when he makes that address to them, it is just as a direct result of that, he is a witness. He is telling them this is what has been happening from of old and what has happened with Jesus and where we stand right now. Because he has been filled with the Holy Spirit and he has become a... Come on, say it. You have become a... Yes. Now, every one of us that is a believer, that's why we are saying as a, it is the believer's practice that we ought to be witnesses. A person who follows the events, has seen the events and is able to report them, is able to carry them out, is able to, you have been impacted by the events that you have seen. If you have been in an accident or you have seen an accident happen and you have heard that in that accident as a result, well, that accident, the way people were hauled out of the car was as a result of them not belting up. What happens? You, with your own life. Every time you can get you don't need somebody to tell you. You don't need to see the cops. You have ever seen it, it disturbed your mind, or you have heard a story, and from that instance, unafunga mshipi. A friend of mine gave us a story recently, or oh, not very recently, gave us some story some time back, and they were just saying about um, an incident they had that somebody was driving, forest road, in a separate ninina nini. No joyo. Yeah. Okifika hapo. Pangani, hindi inasema msema kweli pale. Hao wenye wanaenda huko downtown na huko Gikomba na kule Karioko, alafu wao wengine wenye wanaenda huko into the burbs. Na join to the burbs, into the greeny leafy suburbs. No napo. There is that wall that separates. So they were driving and I think they I don't know what happened anyway, but as a result I don't know what happened there was confusion. So the vehicle just crashed into that katikati place. Just rammed into it. Now the people seated in the front were kwa mefunga mishipi. But the people in the back Wanafunga mishipi watu wanyuma? Na hikuwa matatu, ilikuwa personal car. Wako Gary Kadogo. Na hikuwa mekaa nyuma wako wamefunga mishipi. So the person that was behind the co-driver, hakuwa wamefunga mishipi, umu ngini alikuwa wamefunga. So because of the impact, the person in the back seat, akarushwa, akagonga kiti ya co-driver, ikainama, so they ended up breaking the, I'm sorry, this is a bit graphic, yeah? but they ended up breaking the spine of the co-driver, who had belted up. Okay, so the co-driver has gone through years and years of therapy and now he's back on their feet and so on and so forth. But all that they were telling us, they were actually telling us about the importance of the people in the back. Me was seated in the back when we were being given this story and I had them belted up. When he gave me this story, I just sat back and I put on my belt. Now after that, even when I sit in the back, I always belt up. You see, there are certain things that when you witness, they change even the way you behave. That's why we are going with this story. When you are a witness, you see, you have seen firsthand, or you have heard, and then you are able to recount, you are able to report, or either with your words or with your actions. The believers at Antioch were called believers or Christians because they were able to, it was as if they were reporting with their lives. The way they would act, the way they would talk, the way they would walk, the way they would do things. So they were called Christians. What were they doing? They had become witnesses when the Holy Spirit had come upon them. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, you are a witness. Turn to another one, tell them, you are a witness. All right, turn with me now to the book, back to the book of Acts chapter 6. We find that in the book of Acts chapter 6, there's a very interesting story there. It says that in those days when the number of disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Now, the, it is interesting to note that in those days of the early church, which is where we know the church from, that those days there were still disputes in the church. I mean, imagine that, that even in that what we would think would be the perfect model of church, even then there were disputes. 
I know all of us, because we are in church, it is not a thing of surprise to us that there are disputes in the church. Kweli si kweli. But it is encouraging to think, ah, kumbe siyo si si tu. Ata uko kulikuwa tunayo mashida. In those days, there was a complaint against the Hebrews and the Hellenists, okay? Now, just to try and, uh, and explain, just so that we can get some Bible knowledge of where we are. By this time, by where we are standing in, this is in Jerusalem, this is still the days of the early church. The congregation is about, has grown to about maybe 5,000 people. It's a big congregation. It is bigger than when we have our gathering of both the main campus and this campus. If we were to include another main campus here, maybe that would about be the number. Now, that is the church at that time, okay? So the church is still in Jerusalem. There hasn't been very much of dispersion and so on and so forth. The church is still very small. It is starting to form. Very small consider comparing to right now. First 5,000 is no small number. But by that time, the enemy has been trying. To this point, the devil has been attacking. If you read all before there, the devil, since the church has been founded with the coming of the Holy Spirit, the devil has been trying to beat and to put down the church. The high priest is here coming and they have imp um, imprisoned the apostles. They have beaten the the apostles, it is very dramatic when you read it in chapter 5. If you go behind that chapter 5, you're going to find those stories. They have been arrested, then they have been released, then they are taken again, and Gamaliel is giving a response there to just say, if this work belongs to man, it will just die. But if it belongs to God, please leave these people alone, lest you be fighting God. The Bible actually says something I found very interesting. It says, and they agreed with him, and when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, so they beat the apostles up, and it says something very interesting. They departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Think about it, beloved. These apostles were taken and beaten. deliverance church? worship center. Nini wa Christo? Eh, mmekata kuachana na imanene wa kubiri? Sawa. Kila mtu viboko zake sita akitoka akena nyumbani. Nasema mimi ata huyo yesu sijawai patana na yata sejui. Minasema nini? Wenye wana. Asama, ah bro, bro, wendu ulikuwa natubiri ya waipi leo? Ah, we, wacha yu manena. Wako misi kujui. We, mimi. Nika kwa. But these believers, at that time, the apostles, wanakubali wanapigo. Wanasema, they counted it a thing of rejoicing. To be counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Remember, we are saying that they had been filled with the Holy Spirit and they became... Come on, they became witnesses. They became witnesses. They were able to take the pain and the shame and because they were witnesses. What a powerful thing then it must be to experience or to witness Jesus Christ. That you have followed him closely. We said that was the second example, uh, the second definition. We have been able to follow him closely and as a result of that, we know something about him. We know something or two about him. By following him closely, as a result, we become witnesses. Witnesses. Like the things that come to us, we actually are excited that we can be, people can make fun of me when I am in school or in class or at the office. People can think I am, I am a fool. I count it as a thing of honor and joy because I am being counted as a fool for Christ. What a joy that I can be called together. Neither nikaitanisho na yesu. Bwana yesu asifiwe. Jamani bwana yesu asifiwe. So the Bible says the enemy has been trying. By those times he has tried to put the church down. A machine all along. A let out authorities against the church. Now the devil is putting in a different tactic. What is he using? He's trying to put now Christians against Christians. It says there were those who were coming. There was a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists. All of these at that time were Christians. All of them were in the church. So he's putting one group of the church against the other. It started back in those days. All right? So who are the Hebrews? The Hebrews were those Jews who were more inclined to embrace Jewish culture, okay? And they were mostly from Judea. Who are the Hellenists? The Hellenists were those Jews who were more inclined to embrace Greek culture and mostly were from the diaspora. That is the Roman Empire, okay? So all of them were Jews. Tuko pamoja. But the Hebrews were more inclined to follow or to embrace Jewish culture. The Hellenists were more inclined to embrace the Greek culture. Let me use the words of David Guzik. He says that the Hebrews tended to regard Hellenists as unspiritual compromisers, okay? If you think about those words, you'll find that even in church, we have those kinds of groups of people. They are looking at others and they are thinking, these ones are unspiritual compromisers, okay? And the Hellenists regarded the Hebrews as holier-than-thou traditionalists. Walikuwa I dress my choice. Me God anangalia the heart. 
Tuko pamoja hadi hapo. Yeah, there are those two different groups of people. If you look at the church even today, they are still, are still along those lines. There are people that see other groups as unspiritual compromisers, and then there are those ones who see others as holier than thou traditionalists. Now, if we allow the enemy to come and pit us against each other because of such small, trivial things, we miss it. Instead of being witnesses, people now are standing on the outside, they are witnessing us. Have you heard people saying, Mio manene ya kanisa stakangi kwa sababu hii, ni mwai kwa mahali, wa kristo wa kileta na juu, ni kaona, hmm, hafadhali, uku kwa dunia, watu wanapenda na kuliko church. Have you ever heard such statements? I'm sure you've heard them. That people are saying, oh, out in the world, there's so much love. Unenda kwa dunia tu unambi wa seke nyo unago through, wana ku embrace, tu wata wajali, ni nini unago through. You know, they're just thinking, lakini kwa church, just because I'm sinning differently than you. I'm sure you've heard those statements. Yeah? So it was around the same thing. But I pray that you will not miss it, that regardless of what the issue was around them, all of them were believers. All of them were the church. But somehow, both of them were missing it. We're going to see it in a minute. It says that why was, there the, why was the issue there? Because the widows, the Hellenists... Um, Yes, the Hellenists were complaining that their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. Now, back in the day of, you know, back in that day of Jerusalem, akukuwa na hizi ma support group, hizi ma ati women, sijui supporting women, sijui I stand with women, sijui women empowerment, akukuwa na yu maneno, sijui feminist movement, yu maneno yukukuwa. So, if you are a widow back in the day, and your husband is one who, it was a highly patriarchal society, so your husband is the one who used to take care of you. So a widow is a woman who has lost her husband. So she has lost her husband, she has lost her livelihood. So ole wako kwa kweli. Unategemea, wewe ni mali sasa ya community. If the community is kind, they're going to take care of you. It was even worse for a widow who did not have children. Because why would people need to take care of you now? So the church organized themselves to take care of the widows among them, or the widows around them. And in return, the widows were supposed to serve the church. They were supposed to be found in the church, actively serving, actively serving in the church. You could find those stories, of course, in accounts um, of the Bible um, in the early church. I think First Timothy uh, going on, is it four or five? There about, you can find how the widows were involved in the ministry of the church. So now the widows are there. So every day, because the church had organized that they will take care of the widows and the widows would give back to the church, there was that arrangement. There are people, there was a group, these Hellenists are complaining that the Hebrews, these traditionalists, are not being fair with their widows, with their widows. What any widow? All of them are widows. The Hellenist widows, the Hellenistic widows. The Hebrew widows, all of them are widows. All of them are church. They are all believers. But how am I letter she done how in Guinea? You see, there has to be something there that we'll find about even the enemy continuing to pit the church against each other, even using that such small groups. I like to think in my heart when I read this that because the widows were neglected in the daily in the daily distribution, I like to think I don't think if there was neglect, and highly likely there was neglect. But I like to think that it was not intended. They were not doing it intentionally. I like to think, how can I find you? And you are a I'm a Hellenist. No, I don't like to think that. But somehow the devil had infiltrated and come in. Satan had come. And it was one of his ways of putting down the church. And they did not see it. So they, they, took, they took this seemingly small true, valid thing, but small thing, and they turned it around as a source of, um, of, of uh, what's the word? Of chaos in the church, and division and disregard. It says there arose a complaint. So haikuwa atikitu kidogo, ilikuwa imejulikana. All around, imagine among 5,000 people, there were people that had brought complaints. Okay, let me try and bring it close. I want you to think about some of the small, small complaints that come. Valid complaints, true, but small complaints that cause us to be pitted against each other here in church as believers that stand in the way of our witness. I heard Nani saying something about me. I saw Sijui Nini saying, I don't know what about me. I was in my cell group, and in my cell group, they didn't, I, I used to lead back in the day, lakini sikuizi wameni nyanganya kuongoza. Small things. Kuna wale wase, kwa selietu, 
inakuangani kama ni wakikuyu peke yake alafu kuna wakambaka watatu na mostly wakikuyu ndio wanaongozanga nimeangalia sana nikaona hiyo kitu kwa seli yetu wakikuyu wanakuwa kaa seven alafu kuna wakamba watatu nimeona hivi waka, waka, wakikuyu ndio wanaongozanga I mean think about it quite logically remove the devil just kick the devil out of the picture wakamba ndio kidogo wakikuyu ndio wengi I mean just hata wapange tu hivi wako saba au wengine ni watatu nani wataongoza mara nyingi <laughs> lakini somehow shetani tu anakufunika macho hivi gubi gubi anakufunika tu na kitu unaona ukishare na huyo sasa mkamba mwingine mwenye sio wa seli yenu and these are just examples i'm not using you know just come down relax when church okay there's freedom liberty okay relax breathe out <sighs> wonderful sasa unaenda unashare na mkamba mwingine mwenye yuko kwa seli yenu asema ah by the way unajua nimeonanga pia kwa kanisa generally unaona uko main campus ukikompare na huko shailo uko main campus unaanza kushindwa hata yeye sasa ameona ki hivi ki, kia normally kia wakamba na wakikuyu. Mnaketi mnaona oh yeah there is something there. Kuna by the way what this is what we'll do. Hata wakitupatia chance sasa tuongoze kama wakamba tutakuwa tunakataa. Tuone watafanya nini wakikuyu wanaweza kasa sustain kanisa mzima. Wanaweza. What happens as a result? The enemy and his demons They are clapping in celebration. They are enjoying because what is happening the witness is no longer witnessing. So where people are supposed to be showing Jesus and going out and doing and talking and saying and sharing and being Christ like now people are what? Ngacha nikae tuone. Kwa sababu hii ni hao wakikuyu hata wakuja kuimba. Kwani African Sunday wanaweza wakaimba kikuyu peke yake? Si utahitaji kamba. Wacha tu msikia akijaribu ku enunciate hizo words kamba. Anasema kidevel. Wacha tu jaribu. <laughs> I really if I had if I had thought about this example when I was preaching, I had I would have looked for a better kamba word. Unajua? <laughs> Kuthombosia. You know something like Is that the word for forgiveness in kikamba? Wakamba? What's the word for forgiveness in kikamba? Kwekea. Okay. Great. Imagine that word. Mkikuyu anajaribu kusema kwekea. <laughs> anyway, that's not what was happening, but it is as close as we can get to try and just understand the nonsense that the enemy had used to infiltrate in the church. But blessed be God, beloved. Blessed be God for the leading of the spirit. Because when this claim came, the apostles do not gather the people and say Who are those people that are saying that there is a unfair distribution in when mkono let's see you just want to see who you are mimi mkono get out all of you get out and never return here no the apostles don't do that they do not disregard the claim they do not say no that's not true that's not that cannot be happening in the church of christ those people that are saying we bind those spirits in the name of jesus that's not what the apostles say <laughs> that's not what the apostles say Listen to the to the response of the apostles they say then the 12 summoned the multitude of the disciples and they said it is not desirable from this response we can tell that there might have been one or two we can just in in infer from this there might have been one or two people that had requested that would have preferred let the apostles come and do this because the apostles were in the front line with Jesus Christ them surely they will deal fairly they will distribute fairly so mimi naweza nikataka au watu wengine waache acheni kutumia hawa hawa vijana hawa leaders mwacheni nao hao wakikuja ku distribute pale hawa si hawa my youth leaders sawa ni wazuri na wamekoka na sawa lakini kuna unfair distribution wacha the pastors wafanye hiyo kazi and there is nothing wrong with the pastors doing it the lord has given to them that work but the bishop likes to tell us this is a teaching church bwana asifiwe teaching both of the word and teaching in people how to do the work of ministry all right So the apostles are like okay that's a good thing that's a good thing but it would not be desirable that we should leave the word of god and serve tables therefore brethren seek out from among you seven men of good reputation full of the holy spirit and wisdom i like to imagine full of the holy spirit why because and you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be my 
that the people who are being called to do the work of serving the tables will need to be people who are full of the Holy Spirit because when you are full of the Holy Spirit, you are a Buona sifiwe. A quality that you and I cannot overlook today, beloved, is full of the Holy Spirit. But before that it says, seven men of good reputation. Tell your neighbor, good reputation. Good reputation. good reputation. There are those people who are like, I don't care what people think about me. All I care is what God thinks about me because me, God knows my heart. But how many of us know that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth so you cannot be speaking the way you want to speak here in the earth and just saying, me, God knows my heart. We are able to tell. This week during the cell, if you attend cell, and I really hope you do, if you don't attend a cell meeting, if you don't have a cell, please at the end of the service, stand right there at the entrance. We will find you and we will give you a cell. Say my amen. Because this is a cell church, okay? That's where the life happens. This week in the cell, in the cell, um, in the cell meetings, what we've been looking at is um, our distinction, and we're looking at the words. It is the heart that gives meaning to your words. So the words that you speak, we just need to listen to you, and then you can be able to tell how your heart looks like. If you're full of doubt, we don't need to do many things. Me, God knows that my heart is full of faith. Okay, fine. Let's listen to your words. How do you speak? You're full of worry you're full of anxiety, your language is full of defeat, it's like you have never encountered Jesus anywhere, in the corridors, in the streets, in the estates, in the byways, we just need to look, to listen, to hang around you, when we see the actions that you're carrying out, we're able to tell, do you believe in the redemptive power of Christ? Just by being around you, just by hearing the way you speak, just by seeing how you act, we are able to tell those things. Men of good reputation. That if we are looking for a leader to appoint, we don't need to do very many things. It would be right for us to come to your flat. It would be right for us to come to your flat and ask your neighbors without asking for your consent. We don't need to ask for your neighbors. To um, we want to come to your neighbors. Is it okay? If we want to know your true reputation, your true character, we can go to your neighbor. Yeah, no, wakubiri, like pastor too, wakubiri, kwe naombea watu, nza, eh, hey! kwe naongea mambo ya mungu, eh. Hey! We, we, it is okay for us to come to your family and ask your family, we want to, to invite sister so and so to be our prayer leader. We've been seeing how she prays in church, how she lifts up those holy hands. We just want to give her the department of intercessory ya kuendi wanaongoza. Mama yako anasema, I have two daughters. Which one are you talking about? Sema, no, ule mwenye anakuanga kwa kanisa mwenye uwa naongoza. Sema, hey. Hey, okay. Kama, anyway. Sajui mna ataka wenye wana kaji, lakini. Mwaza, kwa nini mame, butu wambie? Ma, mimi na muonanga kiyomba kwa kanisa peke yake. Kwa nyumba huku? Unless kama kuna anda granduku kwa nyumba anaombe anga mahali. I mean, tell your neighbor good reputation. That is an important thing. So that we move away from this thing like we're living our Christian lives like we are CIA agents. It is a secret inside job. Umejificha hakuna mtu anajua wewe ni mkristo umeji. Hivi maisha yako iko huku chini huku unatokeleza yanga tu juu ya maji on Sunday alafu unarudi hivi chini. Unasema matendo bro, matendo. Wacha na maneno nyingi matendo. Sema actions speak louder than Kinza hizo actions unazifanya wapi? It should be it should, can I go there? It should be that we are such good witnesses, so good that even in the off chance that you have been invited to go to a place in a club with some people, we uko mepanga, lakini umejipata tu uko club, tu mambo inatendekanga, zi mambo ni minki kwe dunia. Lakini uko uko, watu wana kiti hivi, hata wakusaya bombe. Uja, sema, wana kunya, wana kunya juice gani, webro? Wana juice gani? Sema, nani mesema, wana kunya juice? 
Kani uja okoka u, na kani kama zayami okoka. Good reputation. Tuna kuanga levi wanaona, u mtu, u mtu, u this man, my, yes, these people have been with Christ. The way we see them, these ones have, must have been with Christ. Tell your neighbor good reputation. It says men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Full of the Holy... What were these men being called to do? To serve the tables. This daily distribution of giving to the widows what was supposed to be theirs, it was daily. They were not being called to pray for the widows. They were not being called to prophesy, to speak a word. They were not being called to do that. Ilikuwa kusav. Wajwa kusav food. Unaena mnatoa uko kwa store, mnazitoa hivi, mnaziekele hapa, mnazibeba. Mnachota hivi, unasema, wewe, uko na watoto angapi? Watatu, unapunguza kidogo hivi, unaongeza. Wewe, uko na watoto angapi? Hasina watoto. Uko peke yako tu hivyo? Punguza, chukwa ile, nini ndogo, mwekea hivi. Sama uko na angapi? Kwa na watoto saba. Unampatia debe mzima. That was the work they were being called to do. To serve the tables. Serving food. But it was important for them to be number one of good reputation. I would understand of good reputation. Jamani utaki mtu mwenye anafanya kazi kwa mastore za kanisa alafu wanaindanga home na hizo produce. Widow za wapati kitu lakini yeye kwa kia mechaza hivi store. Kama wasemi na kuja bash, yukuna mchele kilo kumi. So you need men of good reputation. I mean, you know, good people can be understood. I, we understand that quality. But full of the Holy Spirit to serve tables? I, I would understand maybe wisdom. To be able to look at that, that person and see, Uyu mtu akona watoto 15, surely, aitaji portion the same na mtu mwenye ako peke yake. Wisdom to know. But for the Holy Spirit and wisdom, it would imply that even the work of serving, serving tables was both spiritual and practical. So wisdom for practical work, the Holy Spirit for spiritual work. Because it is such a beautiful thing when you come to the office where you work at, unafanya kazi, I don't know, poster, alafu msia kikuja kutuma success card za klazits, akizi ingiza hapo, unamuangalia and full of the Holy Spirit, you're like, sawa stamp ni, siju stamp ni, but stamp bado zinuzwa, stamp ni, stamp za kuzabarua, ambia, okay stamp, unamuza ukona glue, they, they can discern by the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's sound like a glue, but are you going through something? Do you need maybe a glass of water? Maybe that person has not seen water before for a long time that morning. There's discernment. Maybe the person that's coming to send the letter has used their last 100 shillings to buy a success card for her son or her daughter who is sitting the exams and has come, and hajakula kitu juwa na juwa. Kama angekula, it was either my lunch or my son's success card. And I'm thinking about my son who is on sponsorship because he needs to receive a barua or success card from the mother. You understand that kind of scenario? So I'm a two poster. Na kika hivi, blessed be God, Pastor Alice tells us, blessed be God that our problems are not branded on our foreheads. <laughs> but it is the mercy of God that we don't look like what we are going through. Stephen thrift. bend down boutique. What man. coordination. Never a monochrome. Blue kuto kajiu adi chini, bro. Taviatons are blue, bro. Wah! But you might not know what the brother is going through. He does not show what he... Highly likely, maybe... One just of course, alikula. Se mawanjala ajakula ako nanjani kumanisha. Alikula breakfast. Ajakunyo tucha ya saane. Ha I'm just playing. Angela is my friend. I can, can make fun. But you're able to discern because that woman doesn't look like what she's going through. You're able to look at her and by the leading of the Holy Spirit, when he tells you, offer her some water. Offer her some fruit. Maybe you're going to You know, you're going to be banga food coffee. I love you. I'm going to lunch time. Hi, people full of the Holy Spirit and self-control. You know those people? 
uliingia na lunch yako asubuhi kwa ofisi ati alafu inakaatua hapo wewe unajua hapo kuna mchele na minji na umekitwi vya tunafanya kazi chik 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 hello yes okay thank you chik 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 na kuna mchele hapa na minji I remember Pastor Francis sharing an, a joke that day anasema ati unaenda kwa nyumba ya watu unafungua hivi unapata yogurt kumi. siko hivyo ati no mtu amelala usingizi ka no <laughs> unatoa api usingizi na uko na yogurt kwa fridge mna jaribu kulala hivi una... mm, something is not right wewe <laughs> unakalia yogurt usiku unasikia tu umesikia kwa kitchen kuru 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 saa tisa huyu kuru kuru kwa watu wanasema wewe umeenda sleep over kwa mtu unasema hey huku kuna panya ama ni wakora anasema ah bro huyo ni bro yangu tu <laughs> So those people you've carried lunch you call office you're able to just hear the leading of the spirit just would you like some fruit a banana would you like a mango do you like some some oranges i like oh no 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 ni baru atu nataka kutuma sama no i insist please let's share full of the holy spirit and wisdom you hear the leading of the spirit that's spiritual and then you get into the practical work wisdom it is important it will be important for the apostles back in the day and for the people who are coming to serve the tables that as you're lifting and serving and picking you're not just a conveyor belt unachota unaweka unachota una wewe stop holding the line back up chota tuweka chota weka wewe let any our mama huku chota weka our my widows niche now chota weka wewe hebu endeni hapo ngoja wacha ni kuonyesha vinyata you're not just a conveyor belt believer full of the holy spirit like Hi madam after i give you this portion could you just maybe wait for us there you're able to refer them to the apostles you're able to discern the need and to think about your personal life beloved that it is a necessity for you to be of good reputation full of the holy spirit and wisdom i know you say no me i'm not a pastor yes serving tables Where do you work? In the matatu industry? You are an Uber driver? You know how important it would be as an Uber driver for you to be full of the Holy Spirit of good reputation of course we understand that ndio five star rating five star rating we understand that no ndio watu wakitafuta Uber yako na mhm this is a lady that is looking for an Uber and apata ni driver mwanaume akiona yako na five star rating like oh this is a safe man you know highly likely we understand good reputation but full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom as you're ferrying people and in the back wametoka ku club You know just spitting out the window na just demonic sharaba sekete <laughs> Full of holy spirit you don't know what kind of ministry you might like to give we have heard of stories of people that gave their lives to Christ in the back of a cab have we not you might not even say something but we know of some people who the music ile unaeka full of the holy spirit you're able to discern unaeka music hiyo music mwingine anakufanyia evangelism mwenye ameimba wimbo inacheza huyo mtu amelewa tu kwa hiyo god you love me too much too much your sowing seeds full of the holy spirit and wisdom i love giving that example because our sister joy likes to share with us that she gave her life to christ out of listening to a song imagine that imagine that So huko tu mahali una you're not thinking eh hey, ni uba so when you na beba ni wasewa club wasewa club so nika boom boom toa boom 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 toa you, no you're not just following fitting into the culture without thinking about it full of the holy spirit an uba driver that is full of the holy spirit and wisdom good reputation full of the holy spirit and wisdom you are a marketer telemarketer as you're calling the people of course your calls are being monitored but how are you speaking to those people is there a way for you to be of good reputation full of the holy spirit and wisdom Think about whatever it is you're doing you're a business person you're selling your wares uko pale una interact na watu good reputation full of the holy spirit and wisdom think about whatever it is that you're doing think about if all our schools were filled with teachers that have good reputation full of the holy spirit and wisdom hapana mwalimu ambaye unaangalia hivi kijana mwalimu wa hisabati kwa kweli unaangalia hivi unasema wazazi wako walifanya nini <laughs> Yes, we'll see me up on the bow. 
But instead of all the insults, and I think a good many of us received insults when we were in high school from some of those teachers, especially those science teachers and mathematics. Only want to kind of imagine if they were a good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. They are looking at you and they are saying, "Mashigadi, I know you are not understanding this concept. Imol concept But I want to believe that God is able to that God that you say you believe in. Where Kijano was see you. I pray that God is going to lift you up, open up your eyes that you are able to see declarations of a person of faith. Na mimi nikienda huko siende niki feel dejected ni kama nenda nafikiria ai kuna huyo mwalimu there is a word that was spoken over me by a teacher just teacher teacher but full of the holy spirit and that's how we are witnesses beloved those are the qualities that we need to be a witness you cannot be a witness without that the holy spirit good reputation full of the holy spirit and wisdom and all those things are tied together by the holy spirit you cannot have a good reputation without the Holy Spirit. It won't last. You can't have a name, hold a name for yourself. Only the Holy Spirit is able to do that. And you can't have wisdom without the Holy Spirit. The Bible says it is the Lord that gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 2.6. Okay, so you need the Holy Spirit that's at the center and you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. If you go to the book of Exodus chapter 31, maybe we'll look at that next time, God willing. We find a man called Bezalel. This man, according to most paraphrases, or, or not paraphrases, translations of scripture, is the first time we see anyone in the Bible filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, he was not filled with the Holy Spirit to preach. He was not filled with the Holy Spirit to be a priest. He was not Moses. Moses was still alive in that day. Moses is up in the clouds, in the mountain. Uh, not in the clouds, in the mountain. He's given instructions. For 40 days, he's camping out there with God. God is giving him the Ten Commandments. God is telling him how to build the Ark of the Covenant, the Tabernacle, and so many things. God is giving Moses instructions. And then God says to Moses, while he's still up there in the mountain, Exodus chapter 31, he's saying, I have anointed or filled, put my spirit in Bezalel and to other craftsmen. Why have they been given the Holy Spirit? So that they are able to build to be creative, to create perfumes, kutengeneza makatins, kazi za interior design, kutengeneza woodwork. These are the first person ever recorded to be filled with the Holy Spirit in Scripture. The Spirit of God was not so that they can stand and preach, was so that out of their work of excellence, God may be glorified. Good reputation, Holy Spirit, and wisdom. You need those things to be a witness. I want you to lift up your voice and pray for yourself. I know you know where you're lacking, but I want you to lift up your voice right now and just say, God, I pray that you may help me to be a true witness. For me to be a true witness, I must have your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit will give me a good reputation. Your Holy Spirit will give me wisdom. Those are the things that I require. So that I will not just think I need to be a pastor or a bishop, so that I need the Holy Spirit. In my work, in my school, I need the Holy Spirit. That I may be able to be a witness. How else can I tell people about you, even without my words, unless you put your Holy Spirit in me? How else am I able to discern the other person's need. How else am I able to know which words I am supposed to speak unless you give me your Holy Spirit? How else am I supposed to do my reports with excellence that your name may be glorified unless you give me your Holy Spirit? How else will people ever know that there is a God that is working in this generation unless you fill me with your Holy Spirit? How else will people ever understand that there is a group of uncompromising young men and women in the industry that I am working in unless you fill me with your Holy Spirit. So God, I lift my voice now and I ask, give me your Holy Spirit that you may help me to have wisdom, that you may build a good reputation to the glory of your name. God, fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may be a witness that Lord Jesus, where I am compromising right now, by the help of your Holy Spirit, I will stop compromising, that I will no longer come under pressure. When other people around me are pulling me to go and do things I don't want to do by the leading of your Holy Spirit I will be able to step aside and allow you to lead me and lift me to a place that Lord Jesus Christ I will be a true witness uncompromising to the glory of God the Father. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father we thank you for your word today. We thank you for everyone that has lifted up their voice today to pray. 
And Lord, you see our hearts. You know where we are failing. We are not perfect, but we thank you because you are. We are weak, but we are grateful that you are strong. Therefore, today we lift up our voices. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray that you will make us witnesses. And Lord, this will be our practice to be witnesses. We know it is futile. We cannot teach people to be witnesses unless your Holy Spirit comes upon them. Therefore, we pray for every one of us in this service today and everyone that will listen to you, that Lord God Almighty, you would fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Now, time is up, but maybe you're in this place and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. There is no place for you to receive the Holy Spirit without Jesus Christ. You must give your life to Jesus. You must be born again that you might be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you desire the Holy Spirit, that's beautiful. But if you're not born again, that is futile. You must first receive Jesus Christ that the Holy Spirit might come into your life. If you're there, you want to give your life to Jesus. If you lift your hand, we'll see it quickly. And it will give us great joy to lead you to the Lord today. If you lift up your hand, you want to give your life to Jesus. Are you there? Are you there? You want to give your life to Jesus? We'd love to pray together with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 If you're afraid of the crowd and you're there, do not go home the same. Do not think that this is just a feeling of the moment. Whatever you feel in your heart, that tug at your heart, that's the voice of God calling you home. Just say yes. At the end of the service, just locate any one of our leaders. Just tell them you want to talk to a pastor and someone will pray with you in confidence in the name of Jesus. Allow me to just pray for one last category of people. Maybe you're out there and you have looked at what your life looks like and you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. In your work life, you need the Holy Spirit. Where you are, maybe you're a student, but you need the Holy Spirit. If that's your prayer, if you could be confident enough to just rise up on your feet right now. Just rise up on your feet. And we're going to pray together in the name of Jesus. The rest of us, our eyes are closed. We are making our prayers to the Lord. Thank you. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you that are standing in the name of Jesus. Libre kesha talabaz, reba hambe rebo zamashi katalaba, ribordo robrekete lebo ziba kasha talabaze. Father, we acknowledge today that it is impossible to be witnesses without your Holy Spirit. You said it in the instruction that we shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon us and we shall be your witnesses. We shall be witnesses unto you. Therefore, for every one of us standing in this place, we are standing because we acknowledge how futile and how weak we are without your leading. Therefore, today we pray, O oh God Almighty, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. Rest on us afresh in the name of Jesus. Pour afresh into every one of these ones that are standing. Pour out afresh that we may know how to move and what to say in our craft. Some of us are in school. Some of us are at work. Some of us are entrepreneurs. Others are in business. Others are in employment. For others, we are standing because we want to know how to be better family people, sons and daughters. Lord Jesus, fill us with your Holy Spirit. He will give us a good reputation. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. He will give us wisdom. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. He will make us witnesses in our day and age that more may be added. Numbers may be won into the kingdom to the praise and to the glory of your dear name. We receive the feeling of your spirit this day. We receive the fresh outpouring of your grace and we thank you because you've done it. In Jesus' name we pray and we give thanks. Receive the Holy Spirit today in Jesus' name. Put your hands together. Celebrate the name of Jesus. Come on, celebrate the name of Jesus. <laughs>